So this is a bit of an off the schedule video. By popular request, I thought I'd make a video about lucid dreaming because there was a lot of interest and I love it. So I thought I'd talk about it. You know, not a lot of people talk about lucid dreaming, but it's a very universal thing in the human experience. Um, lucid dreaming is where you wake up in your dream and realize you're dreaming without waking up into waking life. So you stay awake and present within your dream. And it's an extraordinary experience. Some people only have this experience a couple times in their life. Other people are very prone to having lucid dreams all the time, but it's something that you can cultivate in your life. And it's really quite easy if you have the dedication and time to give to it. So um, I've been thinking about where to start and I thought I would begin the video with saying, what is lucid dreaming? Why would you want to cultivate that experience in your life? Um, and I would say that the overall reason, uh, there's so many reasons, but the primary reason is because we digest life on multiple levels. You know, there's the waking personality and the ego and the prefrontal lobe and our understanding of the world as we digest it coming in. But there's a whole other process going on inside of you at all times, which is your subconscious processing and understanding what you're going through. Now, when you're dreaming, the entire environment around you, from your surroundings to the people you interact with, are all a product of you and your subconscious rules it all. It's a wonderful way to learn about those underlying processes that are happening inside of you anyway that you may have never been aware were there. And another really good reason I'll throw out there is that um, for people who have frequent nightmares, lucidity is a wonderful way to confront those things. You know, in your dreams, the more you fear something, because it's all a product of your brain, the more you fear it, you give it power. And the more you fear something, the bigger and badder it becomes. But if you can face that fear, almost universally, the, what happens is there is a transformation. And usually that incredibly negative thing transforms into something beautiful and awe-inspiring and gives you a lesson that you can take home with you that, that morning. There are three steps, and I will explain them in detail. Number one is remembering your dreams, which involves journaling. Number two is finding your dream signs, indicators that you're dreaming. And then the third is doing reality checks, which bring the two together, and I will talk about all of these. So, number one, remembering your dreams. How many of us remember our dreams? <laughs> Some people, not at all. Some people have crazy dreams they remember all the time. It really has to do with how well you're sleeping, where your attention is when you wake up, and how much attention you give to the dream after the fact. So first of all, if you're not sleeping a lot, like if you're sleeping four to five hours a night every night, you may not actually be getting that deep involved REM sleep that you get after a couple cycles of REM where you're having these incredibly vivid, poignant dreams. Your most powerful dreams are the ones you have right before you wake up in the morning. So. The first thing you have to do is sleep more. And it doesn't mean you have to do it every night, but depending on how dedicated you are, you may have to start setting aside enough time to be able to sleep enough to be able to have the dreams in the first place. The second part of that, like I was talking about, is how, where your attention is first thing in the morning. So when you first wake up, if the first thing you're thinking about is my alarm's going off, oh, my phone has five messages, what do I have to do today? Man, I have to pee your dream is gone. Within those first five seconds of waking, if you don't focus your attention on the dream, unless it was a particularly poignant dream, you probably will just lose the whole thing and it's gone. So it's very important to train yourself to first thing in the morning, think, what was I dreaming? The most useful way to remember your dreams, and in fact, it's an essential criteria for lucid dreaming, is dream journaling. And so that basically means when you first wake up, you think, what did I just dream? And you go through the dream and you figure out all the details and then you get up and as soon as possible, get to writing down that dream. There are some tips involved in remembering your dreams. First things first, you could put post-its or notes or something all around your room so that, you know, even like if your alarm is on your cell phone and there's a message that goes along with it, you can make the message, you know, remember your dreams. Second tip is to not move because when you shift your body's position, you're regenerating all your neural ends, you know, all of your nerve endings and, and increasing sensation to your body, which lets go of the sensations that were all going on in your brain. But if you stay in the exact same position, 
you can kind of go back into that dream space because you're not yet bombarding your body with senses. So first thing when you get up, don't move. Immediately start remembering your dreams and then write them down when you can. And when you're writing down your dreams, write down as much detail as you can remember. When you're first starting this out, you may not have much. When I started dream journaling, I was writing one or two sentences, maybe a paragraph of five sentences or so. But get what you can down and go through all five senses. See, smell, hear, taste, touch. What were you experiencing? Sometimes a dream is, is nebulous and you can't really understand where you were or who you're with, but you remember the color orange or the smell of raspberries or the feeling of the wind on your face. Capture whatever it is that you can remember because that will train your brain to start realizing that the senses you're having in your dreams are valid and they're something worth remembering. Now, a year and a half into dream journaling, I mean, I wake up, most mornings I write like 10 or 12 pages. I mean, you know, long, epic dreams because I'm able to recall that many details, but it did not happen overnight. It took a long, frustrating journey of being like, why can't I just remember these dreams? But be patient with yourself. The process does work itself. So dream journaling and remembering your dreams is the very first step. Step number two is identifying your dream signs. So after you've been dreaming for a while, you'll start to see a redundancy in your dreams. There are certain people and places and uh, environmental things or elements that are in most of your dreams. For instance, my hugest dream sign is water. In almost every single one of my dreams, there's a waterfall, there's a lake, it's raining, you know, I don't know, I've got a glass of water in front of me, I'm trying to find water. Water is very present in my dreams. But whatever it is for you, you know, things that you dream all the time, take note of them. The way I started doing this is I started every couple of weeks, I would go back and read all the dreams that I had had and make notes of any recurring elements. Because you will have some dream signs that you have all the time, and then you'll have some dream signs that are only recurrent for a period of time. Like right now, in present day, I'm having lots of dreams of ascending. I'm climbing mountains, I'm climbing boulders, I'm rock climbing, I'm climbing trees, I'm going up enormous staircases. Most of my dreams involve ascending. So that's a dream sign for me now, but that wasn't true a couple of months ago. So as you're journaling, take note of your dream signs. This is very important, and the next step will explain why. Also, Make note of any feelings. Those are also dream signs. If there's a recurring emotion, that's worth noting because that's an indicator that you're dreaming. Then you can start doing the final piece of the puzzle, which is the most important part of lucid dreaming, and that is doing reality checks. In your dreams, um, the the environment that you live in is very different. There are certain universal qualities to dreams that hold true for almost every person on the planet thus researched. Such as, anatomy is very vague in dreams. When you're dreaming, it's very hard to read signs. You may be able to read the text, but then if you look away and you look back, it's all new text, or it's a different color, or it's in a different place, or the letters are moved around. Usually if you stare at a body of text, the letters start moving around, wiggling around, changing form. It's almost impossible to read digital clocks in a dream. All the little pieces of the digital numbers like swim around and never actually form a coherent time. You may think you read a time, let's say you glance at an alarm clock in your dream and you think you read noon, but if you actually investigated while you were dreaming and went to look at that clock, you may see that it's changing time every time it blinks or that all the little pieces are forming weird stuff. So there's a lot of inconsistencies in dreams that you can use as a basis for judging whether you're dreaming or not. So I may have gotten ahead of myself. Let me explain how these two ideas tie together. When you're awake, once you know your dream signs, you must practice routine and regular reality checks while you're awake. Because everything that happens in our dreams is mostly based on the routines that we live out. In waking life, if you perform reality tests, such as looking at your hands, checking a clock, seeing a sign, you'll notice, okay, I'm not dreaming, everything's fine. But if you do that enough in waking life, if you do reality checks while you're awake, you will ultimately do reality checks while you're asleep. And I can personally testify to that because at first I thought this was a wild idea, but it really works. 
So what you gotta do is your dream signs. For example, whenever I see water, I go, <gasps> am I dreaming? And I just do like a 10 second test. I look at my hands, okay, five fingers, two wrists. Next I find a clock. This is my second reality check. I look at a clock and I look at the time and I really study those numbers and see, are they moving? And I look away and I look back at the clock. Does it still say the same thing? Then I look for some signage somewhere around me, something in front of me, or if I'm driving you know, on a billboard or something, and I look at those words, look away, look back, look away, look back. Does it still say what it said before? Is it still the same color and format? Another thing that's very inconsistent in dreams is gravity. So if I'm in a position where I can, I'll also do a couple jumps, and I'll really believe that I can fly. Because in your dreams, even if you can't fly, usually if you jump, you don't fall right back to the ground. In dreams, you kind of jump and then float back down to the ground. And you may not have noticed that if you haven't explored your dreams a lot, but it's very, very consistent. So, anytime I see a dream sign, my sister Namaste, uh, if I see water, or right now if I'm ever climbing stairs or going up something, I do a reality check. It only takes like 10 seconds of your time, but do it, you know, 10 or 12 times a day. Sometimes you don't encounter your dream signs often enough, in which case you can pick something else, like every time you go through a doorway, or every time you go to the bathroom, or every time that you get a call from your mom. You, know, you can pick arbitrary things if you like, if you don't have enough dream signs, to start doing reality checks with. And I really recommend starting with checking your hands, checking a clock, checking a sign, and checking your jumping. Those are four easy ones, but there's a whole bunch of others that we could get into if we had the time. So, you're journaling, you're remembering your dreams. Then, you're writing down your dream signs. Then, you're using your dream signs to do reality checks, so that eventually, you will accidentally do reality checks in your dreams. <laughs> because, when you're dreaming, you don't think you're dreaming, right? You know, a purple elephant walks in the door and then your great-grandmother comes dancing the conga down inside the hallway and you just totally accept this as fine. And when you wake up, you're probably like, what the heck was that? But in the dream world, you just accept it as reality. So, when you're in a dream, you're gonna trip yourself out one day once you actually do these habits and you're gonna do a reality check just thinking it ain't no thing, just like all the other reality checks that you did in real life. But, in your dream, you're gonna look at your hands, look at the clock, and at some point realize, oh my God, I'm dreaming. <gasps> now usually, when you wake up to lucidity, when you realize the brilliance of the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm awake and aware of the fact that this is a dream, you wake up. So the final step of the equation, once you're doing reality checks all the time and you're finding yourself occasionally doing routine reality checks in your dream just on autopilot and then realizing you're dreaming, you have to stay in the dream. This is the hardest part and what I'm currently working on because I'm still not very good at it. I get way too overexcited and I wake up and this is a very common problem. So, there are a few things you can do to stay in your dream. Number, uh, there's been tons of ones that have been researched, but the, the primary ones that have been found to work for most people are focusing your attention. So, for, I'll give you an example. I was dreaming once and I was in a weird situation and I saw a girl and I thought, she doesn't look real, she looked like a doll. So I did a reality check, just thinking, meh, whatever, I'll do a reality check. And sure enough, I had seven fingers on both hands and a baby arm growing out of my arm, like this little gimpy, I don't know. But I was like, Oh my God, I'm dreaming. And immediately, I stared at my fingers. You have to focus your attention on something. Really zoom in and see all the detail and hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And if you're lucky, the swooping sensation of lucidity will go away and then you can unfocus from whatever you're looking at and be present in the lucid dream. Another great technique is spinning. Something about the um, physical sensation of spinning confuses the ears and the brain and uh, it, it doesn't allow your body to come out of the dream state. I'm not describing it right, but basically like when you're out in a field and you've got your arms out on the side and you're just whirling, 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 that feeling of spinning. If you can imagine yourself doing that in your dream, it does help a lot of people stay lucid. And another way is to go with the swooping feeling. So rather than let that swooping feeling wake you up, fall down in your dreams. I know some people in the, in the forums that I participate on online, 
they just fall flat on the ground and like hang on to the ground while everything swirls around them, but they let that swooping feeling be part of the dream of them falling to the ground. And then once, once that clears, because it will clear after about 30 seconds or so, usually you're in, a whole, you're in a whole new environment, but it's all of your choosing and you're playing around in your subconscious, awake, but asleep. So this is how you lucid dream. Why would you want to do it? I mean, really, once you get there, it's like, woo, I'm dreaming, okay. Well, first of all, you can fly around the world like Superman or go meet dead friends or go practice an instrument that you play, but play it in a concert in a great hall and probably do great or um, go do something you never have the guts to do in real life, like go skydiving or skiing on a d double black diamond course or something. So there's all sorts of fun things that you can do in your mind. But you can also do t uh, terribly spiritual things if you really want to get into it. You can sit down and have a conversation with one of your favorite gurus or teachers. If you want, you can sit down and have a conversation with God and see what happens. Um, you can have a conversation with yourself as a child and resolve old issues. So there's a lot of potential. So that's how you do it. Journal to remember. Note your dream signs. Practice reality checks. And then stay lucid. Once you do a reality check in a dream and you have realized you're dreaming, figure out a way that works for you to stay in the dream. And I guess I would just close by saying, you know, it's a really comical and interesting process. Sometimes when I get to a level of lucidity, I wake up literally laughing out loud. It was such an enjoyable experience. And once you do go into lucidity regularly, you can make routines, people you visit regularly or, you know, demons that you confront if you have frequent nightmares or recurring nightmare situations. You can work through those processes and you will find that you are a far more centered, balanced, intuitive being once you start interacting with your subconscious that way. It's a very powerful thing. So this video I'm assuming is already way too long and I'm going to have to edit the crap out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got questions, leave them below. I would love to start a discussion about lucid dreaming because it is so fascinating. And um, for further reading, I would recommend the book Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen something, LaBerge. I don't remember his last name, but it's called Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. I'll put a link down below. You can download the PDF for free. He has spent 30 years of his life researching lucid dreaming in sleep institutes, and his findings are fascinating, as well as his personal journey is entertaining and very interesting. So if you want to learn way more than what I have to offer in this short video, go check out that book. Leave me comments below. What are your experiences with dreaming? What would you love to conquer or do in your dreams if you could control your environment? And uh, how many lucid dreams have you had? Do you have them frequently? I'm just really curious. <laughs> this was a crazy deviation from the norm. I hope you enjoyed it. Blessings. Happy Easter. And I will see you guys pretty soon with the weight loss update.